Last year at Class M, Chris Lucci dropped back to pass, looked long and found Mark Chrisman beating the secondary for a 35-yard touchdown. But late in the third quarter, Dave Campbell recovered this fumbled punt attempt and Pottstown was on their Then in the fourth quarter, Glenn Reiner rolled right, looked for someone to throw to. No one was open. He kept the ball, went in, and Pottstown came up with a 14-8 come from behind, win over Pottstown. The Falcons will be hungry this year. From Ponce Grove High School, PCTV Sports presents the Chess Motley Game of the Week. Today, the Ponce Grove Falcons host the Ponce Town Trojans. Petro along with Ron Reed here at a windy Ponce Grove Stadium where it is homecoming afternoon for the Falcons. Right now, the Trojan band entertaining, and in just a few moments from now, we'll have the kickoff as the Falcons, 2-2 two two on the season, take on the Trojans, who are 2-1-1. Two, one one. Falcons coming off a loss to Downingtown. They held the uh, Downingtown Club uh, pretty well in that first half before uh, the... Visitors broke loose and beat them by 14 points, while the Trojans, with a sterling defensive effort, bested Boyertown. Well, I'm looking for a real exciting day today, Denny. It's great football weather. I'm, we're just about ready to blow off of this uh, deck out here. But uh, this is a big game for both clubs. Pottstown and Pottsgrove's a real natural rivalry. You know, they live right across town, and uh, both teams seem to be sky high in the uh, pregame, and I'm looking for a lot of excitement today. Okay, on offense, uh, pretty much the Trojans will have to contain Chris Lucci and uh, Scarlotta of Pottsgrove. Well, I think the win's going to be a factor in the throwing attack, and uh, it's going to be the uh, the running games of both ball clubs. I would have to give the Trojans just a slight advantage in the running category because they unload or unleash that Ezra Wright, who's doing a, a great job as a sophomore. They have Todd Miller in the back for, back field Randy Douglas they have uh, uh, Jason Jones they do have a nice backfield on the other hand the uh, Pottsgrove Falcons can counter with uh, Lucci and Mike Mills and uh, I think Mark Chrisman on the reverse there's a lot of excitement in, uh, on both squads well it'll be a good matchup a backyard rivalry between that's coming up next right here on channel 11 PC TV I'm the general an old world crack of your kitchen around and decided to go with general home centers quality and their price it's built up time we'll use plate board plastic has had some really ideas and the old color styles and for any custom woodwork in your home general home centers we have a reputation for building the best snowmobiles in the world. And we're proud of because in the process of keeping ahead of the competition, we've come up with a lot of engineering firsts. So we not only outrun the competition, we outride the competition. And we outlast the competition. Polaris. Nothing beats the way we're built. Ford has provided reliable and dependable service to the Pottstown Board bring the full line of Ford cars, as well as a wide selection of trucks. So whether it's lease or sales, Spencer wants to deal with you. Just minutes from Route 100, Berlin. And I'm Leo, that an insurance agent for you the of being able to select for you and cover for your insurance need. So whether it be your auto or business insurance, is as important to us as your rate. Convenience, we hours and we are located.
next to the Pottstown Subaru in Limerick. Feel free. From the sensational dance dance, Potts brings you the world's first total free dance with Marine Jahan. Suddenly, five, music, movement, and your own style. It's hot. It's the exercise routine that's but routine at Potts Golf Club now. I go away kind of a street town. The Trojans will kick off John Thorpe, number 45, clad in the white visiting road uniform of Pottstown. We'll do the honors for the Trojans. Deep to receive, Mark Crispin, number 32, along with 22, Mike Mills. Falcons. It's homecoming day here at Falcons 2-2, two two, coming off a loss to the Downingtown Whippets. Trojans, meanwhile, victorious a week ago over Boyertown. That is 10-yard line. Crispin running left. Has some room up around the 30-yard line, and he's brought down by a host of white-shirted Trojans. Field position round to start their drive. First and 10 from the 30. The officials for today's game, Robert Lacey is the referee, Bob Malonsky, the umpire. The linesman is Bob Wellington, and Mogul, the line judge, and the back judge is Bob Arner. Well, Mark Christman made a nice return to have decent field position there to open our 31-yard line. Dave Stoll, number 52, is the man over the ball, the center for the Falcons. The backfield for Pottsgrove will be Chris Lucci, number 18, at quarterback. Tony Scarlotta, number 40, is the fullback. Mike Mills, 22, the tailback. And the wingback will be number 32, Mark Crispin. That defensive line of Pottstown looks very large in comparison to Pottsgrove's offensive line. You know, the defense of the, of the Trojans has been very, very difficult to run against in the season, in the season so far. And they did a tremendous job last week against Boyertown. Save for that six seconds, Boyertown Bears were completely dominated by the Trojan defense a week ago. We'll probably get an opportunity to see Chris Lucci air it out to Mark Chrisman today some. I think the wind's going to be a little bit of a factor. Mark Chrisman has been the primary receiver for the Pottsgrove Falcons. Chris Lucci, certainly back from last year, has some veteran experience, as well as Tony Scarlata, who's the fullback and uh, does a nice job out of that position. All right, the reason for the delay in getting this playoff here was that they had to recycle the scoreboard clock. Five seconds had elapsed from the time Christmas took the ball until he was tackled. So things are a set round, and we're ready to go. First play of the ball game between the Falcons and the Trojans. Falcons lined up first and 10 at their own 32-yard line. Trojans out of their 4-4 defense. Chrisman, the man in motion near side. The give is to Scarlotta and the big fullback who a week ago gained 64 yards against Downingtown. End of scrimmage by a host of Trojans and you can bet Randy Douglas and Todd Miller were in the middle of that. The Trojans are really tight. They must have uh, suspected that Pottsgrove was going to run the football in the first play because they really brought the inverts up tight and it was like seven offensive people blocking against uh, eight men on the line of scrimmage for the Trojans. Scarlotta with a gain of one. It's second down nine for the Falcons from their own 33. Just in the opening moments of quarter number one, Denny Petro along with Ron Reed and our entire sports team from PCTV. Lucci rolls left, looks for a receiver in the open in the flat. That is Mark Crispin, and Crispin hauls it in in front of the Trojans' Dave Makowitz. It appears to me that Randy Douglas is, uh, or Jason Jones has been assigned to play a monster type of back and is going with Crispin out of the motion. We're going to see Mark Crispin, the, the uh, flanker, go in motion here, and all of a sudden you're going to see Jason Jones appear. Now watch 
Christman makes a nice hold down. And he's tackled by the other linebacker, Randy Douglas, for the Trojan defense. The pass play picked up five yards. It's third and four for the Falcons from their own 38-yard line. The handoff to Scarlotta, and he's going nowhere. Steve Rose, number 83, and Joe Brown collaborate to make the stop for the Trojans. You'll see here that Pottstown uh, has a very tenacious defense. They've only given up an average of 76 point or 76 yards per game, whereas Pottsgrove has given up about 185 yards. The Trojans, one of the area leaders in defense here, certainly have been strong here early in the football season. Roy Martin and John Thorpe drop back for the Trojans to receive the punt of the Falcons' Jeff Fennick. Low snap. Fennick gets the kick away by one of the up. Arpinski for the Trojans. There is no score here at Pottsgrove. will return in just a moment. Try this. From Honda to it, people look at it, and everybody wants a shadow. From you know, it's in charge. Well, I kiss Honda. It will add or free gift with purchase. Back here at Falcon Stadium, a shot of the turf there briefly, and now there you see the two teams, the Trojans and the Falcons. Randy Douglas for Pottstown picked up five yards on a first and ten try from the Trojans' 47-yard line, and I'll have it in Pottsgrove territory at the 48 of the Falcons. We're to second down and five out of the power eye. The give to Randy Douglas, and he bulldogs himself down to the 40-yard line where he's brought down by the Falcons' John Mack, but not until he picked up the first down. And Prowess on the ground here and early going. Well, they're coming out in the nine formation. They have Miller as the up back, number 44, and then they have Randy Douglas as the eye back. Randy Douglas just takes the handoff and deep in the eye, gets a nice kick out block by his fullback, and now that's just the power isolation football play. 9-19 remaining here in the opening quarter. No score, Trojans and the Falcons. Glenn with the handoff to Todd Miller in the big fullback. First straight up the middle, and he'll pick up a nice hunk of real estate before he's down by Rich Clay of the Falcons. Very basic football on the part of the Trojans. Well, that time they gave it to Miller, the up back in the eye. They're running an eye formation. Apparently they feel they can blast the Grove out of there. Now it appears they're going to come out in the split backs. All right, Trojans sent out a double wide out left side. Nelson Barr and John Karpinski. Glenn gives it to Todd Miller once again, and Miller hurdles across the 30-yard line, close to the spot of the... And it's another Trojan first down, as was the man to get him for the Falcons. It's Coach Hayne Harkerode uh, Harker from uh, Pottsgrove. They're celebrating their 27th year here for homecoming, and Coach Harkerode has been a part of that for 26 of the 27 years. A, a very long history here associated with Pottsgrove High School and their successes. First and 10 Trojans, spot of the ball, the 29 of Pottsgrove. Again, out of the eye, the give is to the second man through. That's Randy Douglas, and Douglas off the left side. Finally hauled down by Pat Ford after a pickup of about four yards. To talk there to see Randy on the highlight show recently shown on PCTV last week. Uh, it was nice to see. It's really nice to talk to those uh, young him and then get a chance to see him play here on Saturday afternoons. Spot of the ball, the 26-yard line. Second down and six for the Trojans. Glenn to Todd Miller. And he goes off right tackle up to around the 22-yard line where Rich Clouser was one of the first of several Falcons to nail him but not until he picked up another four yards to bring up a third and two situation for the Trojans. Well, that was the veer, and uh, Coach Dan Weller really likes that type of offense, and uh, Glenn did a good job riding it to Miller. Miller picked up a nice gain over his right side. Johnson, the man wide to the left side out of your screen right now. On third and short, 
That is Randy Douglas, and Douglas has enough for the first down as Mark Chrisman, along with Frank Schweitzer, was there to nail him for the Falcons. Pottstown Trojans sustaining a nice offensive drive. They've yet to put the ball up in the air. They're having good success handing off to their, their backfield men in Todd Miller and Randy Douglas. Fa Trojans have picked up three consecutive first downs. And the first and 10 this time, try goes from the 16-yard line of Pottsgrove. But Randy Douglas cannot find any room that time as the Falcons contain him. It's Coach Dan Weller having a, a good start here. He's 2-1-1. One, one. He's coming off a big win for himself last week against the Boyertown Bears, in which he saw his Trojans really dominate the Boyertown Bears for that ball game. So his team's starting to pick up some momentum and showing a lot of spirit here as the season starts to get into its fifth week. It was a loss of four yards on that last Trojan try. Call it second down 14 from the 19-yard line of Pottsgrove. Glenn bumped at the line of scrimmage as he looked to toss it back to Todd Miller. And Glenn could do nothing but eat it at the 20. A loss of another yard. Call it third down 15 for the Trojans. Pat Ford coming up there on the stop, helping out with George Miller. George Miller is a veteran from last year's squad. Between George Miller and Pat Ford, they met, uh, met Miller at the line of scrimmage. So the Trojans now trying to dig themselves out of a third and 15 try as they go from the Falcon 20. Glenn. Rolling right under some pressure. Breaks away from the first set of container and then is passed downfield for Steve Rose just off his fingertips. Good try, good hustle by Greg Glenn as he was in the grass but managed to break away and almost get the completion to Steve Rose. We have a flag on the uh, play. We're gonna have a holding penalty marked against the Trojans. A lot of pressure that time by the Pottsgrove defense. They were right in Greg Glenn's face and uh, Glenn broke a tackle and was a, uh, able to get the ball away, but he was fortunate to get the ball away. But they are going to mark off 15 big ones against the Trojan offense. Well, two mistakes here on the part of the Trojan offense. They botched up the handoff, and now they finally, but the Falcons will decline it. So it'll bring up a fourth and 15 for Pottstown at the Pottsgrove 20. Number 80 on that play, Jeff Toth for the Pottsgrove Falcons, a junior end, really put a lot of pressure, a lot of heat there on Greg Glenn. On fourth and 15, Trojans out of the eye. Wide out is Johnson to the right. Glenn, straight drop back, fires, looks for Steve Rose. Rose has it, and he might have the first down. There could be a possible measurement. Great play by the Trojans that time as Glenn found Rose on the slant. It, it is a first down. We're going to take a look at Pottstown's premier. 83, Steve Rose, who comes off the line of scrimmage, runs to the flag, and uh, does a nice job. He, he really the soft hands. We've said that over and over again, and a uh, big play for the Trojans from Glenn to Steve Rose. So it is now first down and goal for the Trojans from the five of the Falcons. Out of the split backfield. Karpinski split right side. The handoff to Randy Douglas, and Douglas close to the goal line. Stopped at around the one. Mark Chrisman in on the hit for the Falcons. Well, as it turned out for the Trojans, the declining the holding penalty with fourth and long and they picked up a critical first down there and then on it's up to the Troji or the the Groves defense to try to keep Pottstown out of the end zone split backfield again Douglas 34 Miller 44 Karpinski in the slot to the right the handoff to Randy Douglas and did he break the plane they're saying yes he did touchdown Trojans so the Trojans draw first blood on a one-yard touchdown plunge by Randy Douglas and the big play of course in the drive the one that sustained it was the pass play from Glenn to Steve Rose Randy Douglas did a good job getting in the end zone because the Pottsgrove defense was very good coming off the line of scrimmage and they did hit Douglas initially but Douglas's second effort allowed him to get himself into the end zone Doug Stevens, number 76, will attempt a point after out of the hold of Greg Glenn. The try by Stevens is good, and with 4.38 left to go in the first quarter, to 7-0 Trojans. 
can drive with the greatest of ease because the Honda Accord four-door sedan is a smooth operator. It's slow. Aerodynamic hood line makes a breeze. There's also front-wheel drive. An impressive 12-valve engine. Things are peaceful in the So come see the four-door sedan. Pottstown Honda, Route 422, Pottstown. Back here at Potts Grove Stadium, it is seven to nothing in favor of the Pottstown Trojans. John Thorpe, number 45, will tee it up to boot to either Mike Mills or Mark Chrisman. And we'll take a look at that Trojan touchdown in just a few moments. Line drive boot. Crispin lets it sail and it'll roll into the end zone for a touchback. We're going to come out to the 20 where the Falcons will have it first and 10. Looking at the score by Randy Douglas, what's the defensive line of the Trojan or the uh, Pottsgrove Falcons initially hit Randy, but then he spins off in his second effort and able to over the goal line. Good effort by Douglas, but a good effort by the Pottsgrove defense. This reminder, any use of the pictures, descriptions, video, or audio portions of this program without the expressed written consent of the Borough of Pottstown Cable TV Commission and the Pottsgrove School District is prohibited. Lucci breaks the huddle, sends Chrisman in the slot to the right side. It's first and 10 Falcons from their own 20. Lucci to the air. And the pass complete to number 25, Eric Brown. And if the Falcons can put together a short passing game, as they did a week ago when Lucci picked up over 100 yards, it could pose a threat to the Trojans. Well, you know, the, the uh, defensive backs of the uh, Pottstown Trojans are not that tall, and uh, that time too much of a cushion given. You'll notice there that uh, Lucci does have 21 attempts, and he has a fairly good completion average. Game was for seven yards. It's second down three, but a penalty flag before the snap. Let the experts at Jerry's help you pick the right car stereo. They offer great selection at very reasonable prices with professional installation. That's Jerry's Discount Stereo, your car stereo headquarters, located at 1000 Philadelphia Avenue in Gilbertsville. Penalty was against the Trojans. Five-yard walk-off gives the Falcons a first down. Lucci is going to be buried as the first man to get to him was number 83, Steve Rose, and then 64 for the Trojans. Corey Bockhart came in to finish him off. And you're going to notice here that Jason Jones is going to the side of the formation, going with the wing. They're town defense penetrate when the, they just get right through the line of scrimmage. Miller makes a lot of penetration. Steve Rose comes card number 64 for the Good effort by the Trojan defensive front. Loss of five yards on that sack of Lucci. It is second down and 15 for Pottsgrove. Brown, the receiver, to the left side. Lucci, being hounded by Bockert, escapes the rush of Joe Brown. Looking for some room, dumps it downfield, and the pass just falls shy of its intended target. We'll pick up that receiver's number. That was 81 to tight end Drew Priacini, who was covered by Dave Makowitz. Well, Chris Lucci had a run for his life this time because he was getting a lot of pressure from Dexter Russell and Coey Bocart, and he did, it did enable himself to get out of the uh, pocket, and he did try to throw a pass, but uh, dropped incomplete as he was under a lot of pressure by the Trojan defense. One of the big question marks in the Pottsgrove uh, scheme of things is their offensive line, and they're going to have to start doing some better blocking up front if they want to stay in the game here with the Trojans. Or Lucci might wind up running about 12 miles this afternoon. Third down and 15 following that incompletion. Chrisman, the man in motion, near side. Eric Brown hauls it in, a short pitch, and as he cuts across the middle, he escapes the grasp of two Trojans before he's dropped after a pickup of around seven yards. This is going to be a little hitch play out to number 85, uh, Gar Gar or Jeff Leupold. Leupold gets a block from his uh, people, turns it inside, gets a block from Mark Crispin, and picks up a couple yards as he uh, takes the hitch pl play and comes across the middle of the field. Jeff Fanna drops back to kick it away for the second time here in this first quarter. Roy Martin and John Thorpe deep for the Trojans. Martin touches it. It's a loose ball, and Hawkins in the area, but 
from this vantage point, I believe Martin was able to retain possession. Dangerous play. 223 remaining in the opening quarter. And the Trojans lead it seven to nothing. Only score of this contest. A one-yard touchdown plunged by Randy Douglas. Hit a seven to nothing Trojans. So hit a Racks Roast CTV coming your way soon at a check. Racks Roast teamed up on each fan who attends a Racks that'll save them money. Roast beef, chicken club, cheese, and the endless salad bar. And now here's our announcer the date, time, and location for locale. Next chance to get those free money-saving coupons is Saturday, November 2nd, when the Falcons travel to Owen J. Roberts. Back here in Pottsgrove, there is a field-level shot from our cameraman by Brian Boatwright on the sidelines. As he takes you right into the Trojan backfield. Second and nine for Pottstown. John Thorpe on a quick hitter off the right side. And Mark Crispin hauls him down from behind at the 33-yard line of Pottsgrove, but not until he came up with a big first down for the Trojans. Well, one of the things by mixing up the backfield Dan Weller's accomplishing is a lot of times when Thorpe goes in there, John is used as an outlet receiver out of the backfield. This time, John just takes takes the handoff over his right side and, and breaks the seam and picks up some nice yardage over his right side. And now the Trojans have nice field position with the first and 10. Minute 30 left here in the opening quarter. Trojans in the lead, seven to nothing. And threatening again, they have it first and 10 at the Potts Grove 33. Thorpe across the 30 down to around the 29, but a penalty flag thrown in the area of that offensive line of the Trojans. You see uh, that the Pottstown Trojans have amassed a tremendous average in rushing. They're picking up over almost 151 yards per game, whereas Pottsgrove Falcons are averaging about 85 yards per game. Uh, when you can put that kind of yardage uh, on the ground, in game out, you're going to win some football games, and that's why the Trojans, you know, are 2 1 and 1. Of course, their offensive line play for Pottstown has been pretty consistent, and as you mentioned in the opening, Ken Hartler Road's biggest problem this year was trying to replace, uh, you know, experience for both the offensive and defensive lines of his team. Yes, because they certainly have a host of a lot of backfield people that can haul the ball for them, you know, and uh, but they do have some nice linemen, and I think Pottstown is a vastly improved team over last year's squad. Walk off against the Trojans, moves the ball back to the 45-yard line where it's first and 23. Greg Glenn going up top, looking for Jason Jones, right through his arms. Covering on the play for the Falcons, number 33, Dave Sostak. Dave is Sostak in a good position there uh, as Jason Jones was throwing the football. Now, Jason Jones could have attacked that ball. He kind of waited for it, but uh, that ball could have been either Davis Sostak's or Jason Jones, depending upon which person would have attacked it. And the Trojans have had that play. I think that was the same type of pass pattern they ran four times against Boyertown that almost clicked. And one of these times it's going to. You just have that inner feeling. I'm sure Dan Weller does as well. Second and 23 for the Trojans. The draw to Ezra Wright. Wright's got some running room into the secondary, and he's down to around the 30-yard line. So Wright reels ahead for 15 yards. For the Trojans. Well, they really spread Johnny Johnson out here as a split end. They really widened the secondary people, and then we're going to take, uh, we're going to see a Ezra right deep in the backfield. Actually, Ezra got up there a little bit too quick, but uh, the linebackers had gone to the hook zone area, and he picked up some nice yardage, but still shy of a first down with about third and seven. Well, they're going to credit him with a 17 yard pickup. It's third and six, 26 seconds left here in the opening quarter, and time running down. Karpinski, the man in motion. Greg Glenn evades the first pursuit and hits Steve Rose, the tight end, and Rose runs over. Frank Schweitzer into the end zone. Touchdown, Trojans. Boy, was that an outstanding run by Steve Rose after he caught the football. He just ran over the defensive, uh, uh, the defender there to get himself into the end zone. He had a lot of momentum. He has that big size. Steve Rose goes uh, six foot three, 195. Let's watch the pressure that Glenn first gets, and he breaks the pressure. He he jumps up into the pocket, throws the Rose coming out. Watch Rose now run over to the defender and dip his shoulder and 
the end zone. Just a great play by Stephen Rose after he caught the football. So it is 13 to nothing. Trojans with 13 Boy, a coach remain. loves, Denny, when you lower the boom like that. When you lower that shoulder, you dip it and get yourself in. All right, Trojans lining up, going for two. Actually, they're saying it wasn't a touchdown. They're taking the points off the board. Originally, it was called. All right. They're, they're calling him out of bounds on this play. He probably was because we, you know, we don't have the vantage point. The official does. There's the pressure. Glenn steps up into the pocket, fires to Rose. Now, watch him dip his shoulder here, and boom. He did step out of bounds. It's a good call by the officials, and Potsgrove has the opportunity as we break the quarter to try to keep the Trojans out. All right. We've come to the end of the first period of play with the Pottstown Trojans in the lead, 7 to nothing, and threatening. There's our score, and we'll be back in just a moment. Deal the cards with games and the great place John's got here. Wife and I something that affordable. Huh? <laughs> Coleman campers, the campers can play from back here at Potts Grove Stadium, getting underway with quarter number two, seven to nothing in favor. Trojans have it, second down and goal. Falcon five yard line, out of the eye backfield, the pitch to the tailback. Ezra Wright, he cuts back in against the grain, and he's in for the score. So Ezra Wright finishes off another successful Trojan drive, spearheaded by the pass play from Glenn to Steve Rose, and the Trojans now lead it 13 to nothing here in the first three seconds of this quarter number two. A lot of times the defense is pinching inside, tough on a 6-5 defense down at the goal line. They quick pitch it out to Ezra. That's it back inside. You know, he's a sophomore. He gets his hips up the field. He's going to be a real asset to this Pottstown Trojan offense. Doug Stevens with the point after attempt converts for the second time, and the Pottstown Trojans now lead it 14 to nothing here in the opening seconds of this, the second quarter. And another strong drive by the Trojans. Uh, again, got to be impressed with the play this afternoon with quarterback Greg Glenn. He had his moments in the early season game against Coatesville, but has rebounded nicely in the last two outings. Well, they're mixing it up nicely. They've established the run, and that's enabled them to throw the ball the few times they throw it. Now, they hit Steve Rose on two big pass patterns, and uh, he is a fine receiver, and that puts even more pressure on the Potts Grove defense. They have a lot of offensive weapons. They have Rose, they have uh, Ezra Wright, they have Miller, they have Randy Douglas, they have Jason Jones. Pottstown Trojans have the ability to score, and as I said, much improved over last year. And the uh, Potts Grove Falcons are going to have their hands full, and they're going to have to get some momentum here going as we uh, are in the early moments of the second quarter. John Thorpe, number 45, will again kick off for the Trojans. Mills, 22, Chrisman, 32, standing back to receive his kick at their own 10-yard line. It'll be Scarlotta, the up man, 25, and Scarlotta gets a short. He's run out of bounds by Number Joe Brown with an assist Scarlotta from Dave Makowitz. So Pottsgrove will have decent field position. First down and 10 from their own 30. But again, 14 points down here on homecoming day, your own home field. You've got to get it going, especially against this tenacious. It's Trojan defense. Well, they need a big play, and you know they have the ability to get the big play. Uh, they come back. Uh, you know they've had two real tough ball games: defeat in Westchester Henderson two weeks ago, and following falling in a close game last week against the Whippets. First and ten for the Falcons. Scarlotta going nowhere. Just put his head down and was met at the line of scrimmage by five Trojans. Corey Bacar, number 64, was the man who led the stop for Pottstown. Joe Brown also went on a hit, along with Brant, number 52. You know, outside of... Uh, uh, a touchdown in the waning moments of last week's ball game. We haven't seen a touchdown in three weeks scored against the Trojan defense. All right, Denny, back to the 3-3 struggle they had with Pius. And um, you have to go back to the fourth quarter of the game against Coatesville, where they allowed a, a touchdown really during the progress of the game. Uh -oh. Bubbles picked up by Todd Miller, the Trojans, as the ball was stripped from Lucci, and he runs it home for a score. So the Trojans have struck twice here in 53 seconds of the second quarter to open the game at 20 to nothing. 
Brian Boatwright's Campbell uh, camera is going to put you right here in the huddle here. We're going to see Chris Lucci come out here. He's dry, he's sprinting out. He reverses himself. He's under a lot of pressure there. And then Miller picks up the ball and scampers into the end zone. Great job there by cameraman Brian Boatwright. We might even let him, defense. Might even let him have a piece of pizza after this one for that work. I'm telling that he's allowed to leave the game and start it now. Doug Stevens, number 76, will attempt the point after. And he converts for the third time this afternoon as the Trojans open up a 21 to nothing advantage. Taking one more look at this play, we're going to see Chris Lucci come out of the pocket here. He's going to try to sprint out right. He reverses his field. There's an awful lot of pressure there by number 56 for the Trojans. Kevin. That was Joe Brown. The mix up there the fact that he was wearing 81 the beginning of the season changed it in the game last week against Boyertown and again uh, because he's primarily playing uh, defensive end and playing guard on offense so the reason for the number switch there well thank you for that help Denny because I'm looking at the program and I don't see that number and I'm I know you've been looking for yet. a long time I want to thank the hospitality of the Pottsgrove people up here today's ball game. A lot of thanks to Ralph Mergia, Steve Stavaru, Dr. Raydell, Butch Bartman for the hospitality they provide for us up here in the booth. Well, kudos send it around the league because people have been very hospitable to us wherever we've gone. Mike Mills on the return of the John. Runs it back with a nice bit of shiftiness from the 10 to about the 32-yard line. So the 22-yard run back gives the Falcons a first and 10 at their own 32. Well, that was a big play by Mike Mills. Mike Mills got his hip squared up, got up the field. He didn't try to juke around on the kickoff return. And maybe that's the play the Pottsgrove uh, Falcons need to get themselves going here because there's still plenty of time in this ball game for them to get back in it. Eric Brown, number 25, the receiver to the left of Lucci. Chrisman, the slot back, number 32. Lucci looking downfield for Eric Brown. Double cover, and Brown hauls it in over two Trojan defenders, Karpinski and Makowitz, who both pound the turf in disgust as Eric Brown hauled in that Chris Lucci aerial. Well, the big thing here is now Chris Lucci gets the time to throw the football. There's a nice job. Lucci goes back. His target is Eric Brown. He's double covered. If he leads him just one more, he's going to get down the field and get into the end zone. So a big play by Chris Lucci as he finds Eric Brown open, splitting two Trojan defenders, and it's a first and 10 for Pottsgrove at the 37-yard line of the Trojans. Lucci to Mills, and Mills is wrestled down to the turf by Todd Miller, number 44. Now the Grove's getting some momentum now, even when they move the ball. We see the statistics are very uneven here now after the end of the first quarter as the Trojans hold a very dominating lead, especially in the rushing category. So it's 109 to 39, but the big statistic is on the scoreboard as the Potts Grove Falcons here are trailing 14 nothing on homecoming, or 20 to nothing on homecoming day. 21. Second down and eight for the Grove as they move it from the Trojan 35. Mills in motion to the left side. A quick hitter for Eric Brown in and out of his hands and almost picked off by Dave Makowitz of the Trojans on the rebound. Eric Brown, the ball was delivered to Eric there. If he makes that catch, he's going to pick up some nice yardage. Uh, it was nothing fancy. A look in play to Eric Brown, and uh, there was a cushion given by Dave. There was room to catch the football. A lot of action, and we haven't gone through the second quarter. And Pottsgrove right now on the move, trying to get back into this contest as they trail it 21 to nothing to the Pottstown Trojans. Third down and eight for the Falcons. Lucci, straight drop back. He slips, and he's not able to uh, elude the pressure there put on by the Trojans. Had he not slipped, he most likely would have gotten that ball deep downfield as Brown was going one-on-one -on -one against Karpinski. Well, the field is wet. You're going to see now there wasn't bad time given by the offensive line. Chris just goes back. He straight drop back, sh tries to fake. Now he slips on the field. The field is wet as it rained all week, and it's going to affect the footing, and uh, it's a tough, tough play there for Chris Lucci of the Falcons. So Jeff Fanuck will be standing back at his own 43-yard line to kick it to the Trojans. Send back Thorpe and number 30, Roy Martin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
The ball takes a Falcon roll, and the Trojans will start deep in their own end. 8.39 left in the second quarter of the score. Trojans 21, the Falcons nothing. Tom Eric drew a wagon. Boss told me if I don't start smashing and selling more cars, i in the face. <laughs> Call three and one. From the sensational dancing star of the movie Flash Dance, Pottstown Health Club brings you the world's first total dance fitness system. Free dance with Maureen Jahan. Suddenly feel the beat. Come alive. Music, movement, expression, your own style. This is free dance. It's hot. It's the exercise and dance routine that's routine. It's at Pottstown Health Club now. And down to nine for the trouble from the their own 11 yard line 740 left here on the second quarter Pottstown up by three touchdowns as they give it to Ezra Wright and Wright cracks up over the 15 yard line where he's hit met by a host of the maroon shirted Falcons led by number 58 Eric Zettel the Grove defense starting to toughen up now they're stiffening up they're giving the Trojans a lot more that they can handle there here Out of the eye, the deep man is 34 with Randy Douglas. The pitch goes to Douglas, and Douglas off the left side, close to the first down, but a penalty flag dropped along the line of scrimmage as the Falcon defense rises to the occasion. That was the best Potts Grove defensive series yet. They start hitting out there, there, and they had a holding penalty here, and I don't know what the, the Grove's going to like to do, but uh, that was a good series for the Potts Grove defense. Well, I'm sure they're going to take this one. They elected not to take a holding call against the Trojans on their first offensive series, and that uh, call that was not taken allowed the Trojans to get back into the contest by garnering the first down, but this time, of course, the call going against Pottstown and uh, some strong defensive efforts put forth by the Falcons. Well, you know, the first time they declined it, it put Pottstown into a fourth and 16 situation, which was a good play by them. It's just that uh, uh, Glennon hit Rose on a big first down play. John Johnson standing at his own goal line. Will boot it for the Trojans. Ooh. Heavy pressure to Crispin takes it at his own 45, slips, and then is buried at the 44 with the score 21 to nothing Trojans will be back in just a moment now From concept, I think put the our business name, letterhead, business cards, for everything. Pretty calling. Glad I thought of it. We're coming back. You see the middle of the Pottsgrove Falcon huddle. There is Mark Crispin, number 32, the tailback. The lineup on the slot to the left of quarterback Chris Lucci, who took a good hit on that last offensive series of Pottsgroves. The handoff to Mike Mills, and on the sweep to the left, he's going nowhere as the Trojans quickly get in there. Number 52, Mike Brandt led the pursuit for Pottstown. And now they're having a lot of trouble there containing Todd Miller, number 44. Watch Miller playing the nose guard, get into the gap, and he's into the backfield there, and Jason Jones along with him, number 20. They're having a lot of trouble there with Todd Miller playing the nose, but he's a veteran back from last year. He's a tough kid, and in, uh, he's in the backfield. Second down and 28 following that loss. Falcons started first and 25 because of an unsportsmanlike penalty following the reception of the Trojan punt. 
some movement perhaps on the part of one of the interior linemen for the Falcons. Next week here on PCTV, another twin bill coming your way. Well, Friday night encounter will have the Downingtown Whippets, a big game, taking on the Pottstown Trojans. That'll be homecoming night for Pottstown. And at Westchester East, a team that upset Owen J. Roberts to break the streak will meet the St. Pius 10th Winged Lions. And we encourage you to come on out. The game at Pottstown will be on Friday, October the 11th. The game at East and the Winged Lions on Saturday the 12th over at Coach McStadium. And both of those teams locally, St. Pius 10th and Pottstown, couldn't win those ball games if they have great efforts on Tro their half. Trojans were offside. The five-yard walk-off makes it second and 23 for the Falcons. Lucci under heavy pressure as Joe Brown and Brant were in on him quickly. And I do mean quickly. Lucci manages, however, to get it away. So the incompletion will bring it. A third and 23 for Pottsgrove. See Chris Lucy in an isolated view in our camera here, barking at the signals, but he's under a lot of pressure. He's getting pressure almost every down. That time he's getting the pressure of uh, Mike Brandt. And it's tough to throw the ball when you're under that kind of gun. Well, he has been under the gun on several occasions here this afternoon as the Trojan 4-4 defense has been able to contain him for the better part. Third and 23. Lucci has to put it up top. Evades the first angle of pursuit as he ducked under the arm of Mike Brandt, but then number 78 for the Trojans was there to bring him down Kyle Miller. Of course, Kyle Miller just back in action. If you remember, he broke an arm in a very freak accident before the season. Straight drop back pass. Chris Lucci goes back in the pocket, tries to come up through the pocket to step up, but just a lot of pressure by the front. 4.56, the time remaining here in the second quarter. It is 21 to nothing, the Pottstown Trojans. Jeff Van Eyck on 21 as the Trojans send back Roy Martin and John Thorpe. Beautiful punt, well over the head of John Thorpe. It'll take a Falcon roll, and it's down by Pat Ford around the Trojan 21-yard line. That was just a great punt there, but uh, it took a uh, Trojan bounce because it bounced back. You know, I thought it was going to bounce down to about the 12-8 yard line. Hey, folks, you got a lot of money invested in that car of yours, and I'm sure you always want to have it looking its very best. That's exactly why you should take it to the pros at Rick's Auto Care. They're the experts at keeping your car's interior and exterior looking its best. So remember, Rick's Auto Care, 2223 East High Street in Sanatoga. Give them a call, 327-2125. First and 10 Trojans from their own 21. Greg Glenn looking downfield for Steve Rose, and Rose has it around the 42-yard line. And the big mix-up on the part of the secondary that time by the uh, Pottsgrove Falcons. Rose wide open. Well, the Pottsgrove Falcons are in his zone defense back there, and Rose apparently delayed the line of scrimmage. We're going to see it again. And then he comes out, and he comes across the middle of the field. Now, Rose is coming from the left side. He comes across the field, and, you know, in that zone he got some cushion made a nice catch but slipped he may have picked up some nice yardage even more than what he picked up if he would have fallen first and ten Pottstown Ezra Wright on the quick hitter up over the 45 to the 46 where Mark Chrisman brings him down for the Falcons with an assist from Eric Zettel Pick up of six yards, it'll be second and four for the Trojans. The Trojans moving the ball well here in the second period on the ground again. Well, there's only three minutes and 30-some seconds remaining on the clock. Now, this is an important drive for the Trojans, but more important for the Pottsgrove Falcons because they, they cannot afford another score here if they want to come back and battle them in the second half. Karpinski, the wide out to the right side, out of the split backfield. The handoff goes to Thorpe, and the ball stripped away from him. It appears that one of the Falcons may have pounced on it. And they're saying that Pottsgrove has recovered the ball. Pat Ford, number 20, was the man on the fumble for the Falcons. It's a great initial hit over on this side. Now watch, Bill, watch Thorpe get hit, try to spin out of it. It was a nice hit up there. I couldn't determine who made the contact, but it's a very big play for the Pottsgrove Falcons, and now they have plenty of time to try to move it down the field. That was Eric Zettel, the man who made the hit. Okay, good. They're going to see it again here. We're going to see Thorpe take the handoff. Boom! Gets hit. There's the ball. It's a loose ball. Grove recovers. 2.47. The time remaining here in the second quarter as the Falcons go to work. Scarlotta tries to work the left side. 
but he wasn't able to turn the corners. Jason Jones was the first of four Trojans along with Joe Brown, Randy Douglas, and Mike Brandt to get to him. Pick up a one, it'll be second down and nine for Pottsgrove. Scarlata is a great runner for the Pottsgrove Falcons, but he needs to get a little bit of momentum, and he cannot afford the Pottstown defense to be coming across the line of scrimmage before he can get that momentum going. Logi brings his charges up to the line of scrimmage, which is the Pottstown 44. We're to second and nine for the Grove. Mike Mills, the speedster, tries to turn the corner on the right side, but Steve Rose was there to bring him down for a loss of two. And that'll bring up a third and 11 for Pottsgrove. So Steve Rose doing the job both ways. Oh, he's getting good. We thought he was going to be a heck of a player, and, you know, he seems to be getting better every game as we, you know, uh, fall Trojans and the other area local schools. You know, he's improved. He catches the ball. He can run with the ball when he catches it, and now he's starting to establish himself as a very good defensive end. A minute and 30 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. Stay with us for our halftime analysis and some of the halftime proceedings here on homecoming day at Potts Grove. The pass complete to the tight end, Drew Piacini. And Piacini cradled the ball nicely in front of the Trojan defender, Tony Martin. Well, it shows when Chris Lucci gets the time to throw the football, he can deliver the ball. He's going to go back. Hit his target here, Mancini. Mancini catches the football. He's hit instantly, but, you know, pickup for the Pottsgrove Falcons. So the eight-yard pickup makes it fourth and four for Pottsgrove as the scoreboard clock shows 54 seconds and counting. Chris Lucci's statistics here, you see he has about uh, uh, a 50% percentage there. He's had two touchdowns, two interceptions on the year so far. On fourth and four. Double wide out. Pass intended for Eric Brown is hauled in and Brown racing down the sideline. Dave Makowitz there for the Trojans. Can't get a hand on him and Joe Brown finally nails him. Out of bounds inside the five yard line. Eric Brown number 25 on that quick hitter. Just turned it upfield out around the defender and then raced for the corner of the end zone before being knocked out of bounds around the four. Well, that got the fans excited and the team has to have a big lift here as he took that pass and he got himself down the sideline to get to the four yard line. An excellent offensive play. We'll maybe get an opportunity to see it after uh, this, this play coming up on first and four at the goal line. 29 seconds left here in the half. Falcons have it first and goal from the Trojan four. Lucci in the corner of the end zone, oh. just off the outstretched arms of Mark Chrisman. Number 18, Chris Lucci, We're gonna see that play that gets him down to the four yard line. Here, let's look at Brown now. Look at this. He's going right down the field there. He breaks the tackle. We have somebody step in front of our photographer so we don't really see the play. <laughs> All right, we had a little problem there with the camera angle, but nonetheless, beautiful execution that time from Lucci to Eric Brown and a fine run after the catch by Brown, putting the Falcons in touchdown position. Oh. A quick hitter on the slant for Crispin just off his fingertips. And the incompletion brings up a and goal situation from the time as Chris Lucci We'll come over to the sidelines and talk things over with the Grove coaching staff. Boy, there are two of those passes were so close. Both of them just went right off Mark Christman's fingertips on the first down and the second down. Certainly, Coach Harker Road has to be a little concerned because he feels he should be in the end zone now. He's been so close, and, uh, you know, he, he must be a little bit frustrated, and I'm sure he, he wants to get himself into the end zone here and regroup at the halftime. And, of course, uh, could have very easily been 28 to nothing uh, in favor of the Trojans. They were stopped on the drive as they were threatening the chance to pull within two touchdowns if they could put it home here. They're facing a third and goal from the Trojan seven yard line with 21 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. And there's a look at Chris Lucci without his helmet talking to Ken Hartler Road, the Falcon bench boss, as they try to come up with the play that's going to get their team into the end zone, but they're facing that very, very aggressive Pottstown defense. You know, right at the time, Pottsgrove here exploded with about a minute to go here at the end of the quarter. You know, the 
began to walk down to the field. Maybe those beautiful girls got the players out in the field excited, but uh, we do congratulate uh, Jennifer Grocky on being the homecoming selection here as the queen and her court. Uh, what's exciting is they are so active in all their school's activities, and it's a big day here at Pottsgrove Stadium. Third and goal from the seven of the Trojans. Lucci looking for Chrisman again. He's there. He's got a touchdown. Pottsgrove. Chris Lucci easily beat Tony Martin. And the Grove on the board with 17 seconds left until halftime. Tony Martin is going to try to chuck Chrisman at the line of scrimmage. Chrisman does a good job fighting him off. We're going to see Chrisman get himself. He, he fights off the chuck by Martin, beats Tony Martin to the flag, and it's a real completion and a big play for the Falcons. We have an injury on the field. We, I can't determine. It appears to be number Looks like 57. 52, uh, 52. Possibly David Stalva will pick up the number there. Or pro perhaps 57. We'll, could be Christopher Peake. Well, <laughs> while they're attending to the Falcon player, let's look at that touchdown, Ron. The third time now down at the goal line here, they've gone to Mark Crispin. So he definitely is their bread and butter receiver. And uh, at first and, four, and goal at the four yard line, they had three consecutive plays to Crispin. Two fell off his fingertips. It would have been great catches if he caught them. And then the third one, he falls down for a very big completion for the Pottsgrove Falcons. Could be a ball game, I'll tell you. Second half's going to be one heck of a game, Denny. That it is. The Falcons, of course, uh, trying to take advantage of the size on the Trojans' secondary as they're taking that injured player off the field. That is number 57, Christopher Peake, an offensive guard for the Falcons. And he's being walked off the field there with a little bit of assistance. Jeff Fanock will... Uh, Attempt a point after. Pete Reel, number 14, will hold on the try. And penalty flags fly before the ball snapped. And they're going to say the walk-off is going against Pottsgrove as they made the initial contact, which will move them back five yards. Spot of the ball will be the seven. And Fanuck will be kicking from his own 15. So this point after try now is, in essence, a 25-yard field goal effort. Mm. Real again. The holder. Spot of the ball, the 25-yard line for this point after try. Fanuck's kick is up, and it is true. So with 17 seconds left here in the half, it is 21-7 Trojans. You know, when the coaches review this film, they may take a good look at Mark Christman. Watch him now. He's going to kind of push off a little bit, if you can see it on the right-hand part of your screen, with his inside arm. But uh, not really aggressively. He has got his outer arm. He's running for the football. He can swing that arm. All right, let's... Looking at it again, look at Mark Chrisman's left arm as he, see that left arm as he pushes off with it? But he's going for the football. Now, I don't know. That's it. Some people would say uh, that's a close play. That would have to be a real picky, picky call to call an offensive push off on a Mark Chrisman on that touchdown. All right, that was a, a touchdown by the Falcons. Hansel back into the game. 17 seconds left here in the second quarter. Fanuck tees it up at the 40 to kick to the Trojan deep men, Nelson Barr and Mark Reed. Fanox kick taken by Barr at his own six yard line. And Barr runs it across the 22 about the 22 where Joe Tutoris, number 11, brings him down. So Good coverage no by the, the Pottsgrove Falcons. Now, I think that touchdown has got to put a, a, a boost into their morale here. All right, 10 seconds remaining. Actually, time running downward now, down at three, as the Trojans look not to get a playoff. And the two teams will go to the locker room at halftime as the Trojans lead it 21 to 7. We'll be back in just a moment.
with over 80 9 p.m. and we fear only is the Machines fear it. Once harnessed to the thermometer, there are no secrets. Honda Magna, its V4 seems immeasurable, almost you can imagine. A Magna all the way. It's Honda mentioned this cable ad to receive a discount or free gift with per General Pottstown Volkswagen. Final store smashing price and so Volkswagen. All three, two. Oh. If you're looking for a new car or a truck, National Bank of Boyertown makes it easy for you to get the loan. Hunting and fishing, and need a four-wheel drive to get through the rough. Con's truck loan got me over a rough spot. Even loaned me enough money to add air conditioning. Is more your style? Shift is to national for speed loans. Dependable car, but I want sharp and comfort. National Boyertown's fast approval of my car loan allowed me to buy the car I wanted, which includes stereo that really makes driving a pleasure. The Boyertown can make get that loan for your new car, truck, van, or RV. Ask about our low rates for used cars, too. Call or by any of our convenient banking offices. Member FDIC. Clean as a whistle. Clean? Lady, carpet this wet has to be clean. What about your satisfaction guarantee? Oh, I'm satisfied, Bruno. Any company can say your carpet's clean. Stanley Steamer proves it with our white towel guarantee. We'll rub a white towel over your just-cleaned carpet shows we'll stay and re-clean it no extra charge it's not clean well let's vote stanley steamer anything less just isn't carpet cleaning Along with Ron Reed, and we're going to be getting to the homecoming festivities here, Ron. So quickly, let's uh, discuss uh, the the game uh, plan. The Trojans have run it successfully on the ground. The Falcons have found some going in the air. It's a 21-7 game, and how do you see it occurring in the second half? It all depends on the offensive line of the Pots, Pottsgrove Troj or, uh, Falcons. If the Falcons can give Lucci some time, they can get back in the ball game. They're going to have to play a better second half than they played first half because uh, the uh, Trojan offense is uh, doing a good job, and the Trojan defense has had a very very good first. Half. Okay, so it was a Mark Christman touchdown for the Falcons. Trojans, meanwhile, have gotten scores from Randy Douglas, Ezra Wright, and Todd Miller. 21 7 at the half. Ron and I'll be. Team very special. It's an upcoming chess model league. Receive a coupon book that on time save money on those famous Rax roast beef products. So watch the playbacks and those Rax roast beef products. To work now, everybody. to get those free money-saving coupons is Saturday, November 2nd, when the Falcons travel to Owen J. Roberts. Flash dance. Pottstown Health Club, the world's first full dance fitness system. Free dance with Maureen Jahan. Suddenly feel the beat. Come alive. Music, movement, expression, your own style. This is free dance. It's hot. It's the exercise.
seen that thing seen, and it's at Hot Health Club now. We're back here at Potsgrove Stadium. It is 21 to 7 at halftime. Denny Petro along with Ron Reed, and we're joined right now by a special guest, Therese Fine, one of the cheerleaders here at Potsgrove, who's going to deliver a message to those of you at home regarding homecoming activities here at Potsgrove. Who's on the monitor coming across the screen right now? I believe that's the homecoming queen, is it not? Yes, the queen is Jennifer Grotke. She is a senior, and she's very active in executive council and French club. She's also in student government. Um, Pep club, ski club, debate club, and she's a baseball statistician. People here in Pottsgrove to be our queen. Jody Gustav is also in the court. She's a senior, and she is in student government also. She's very active in other sports. Tina Schaefer, she's also in the court. She's a senior, she's an FBLA. She's also very active in sports. Next is Kim Torman. She's a cheerleader. She's a very active student in sports. And she is, um, Okay, oh, well, there, there. Kim just turned around. Maybe we can get a shot of her. She was, all right, let's get the other member of the court. Next is Kristen Dagan. She's varsity cheerleader, Bay Club. She's also in student government. She's very active in sports and very academic National Honor Society. Okay, again, there's the Queen Jennifer Grocky, the homecoming queen, 1985, here at Potsgrove High School. All right, we'd like to thank Therese Fine, the Potsgrove of the Potsgrove Cheerleading Squad, for coming up here to uh, chat with us. Again, ulterior motives. Your dad is one of the members of our crew, Dalton Fine. And there's our score. It's 21 7 at the half, and we'll be back with third quarter action in just a moment. Civic CRX HF is less filling. It eats up less mile than any other. The Civic CRX HF serves thanks to an efficient 1.5 liter engine, five speed manual transmission, and front wheel drive. Cargo area, storage compartment, and it's two bucket seats. The X today to Pottstown. Every trouble. Pharmacy. And how much can you? But oh, that pharmacy. This is card. Then cosmetic. It's. Be the worst call ever. He hit him at down. Oh, what game you're watching? Uh, on. So, uh, yeah. Missed that pass interference call. Oh man, you. Yeah, but at least we all agree on one. For cold drinks. Yeah. Well, you should see that play. Oh, Out for a day just chasing the sun or doing the work that's got to be done or riding a race that's got to be won. Kawasaki. Now with a choice of three-wheelers that offer low prices, high performance, and about everything in between. And for one more wheel of a time, check out the all-new Bayou four-wheeler. Get the best of both worlds at your Kawasaki dealer. The new 1986 Kawasaki 300cc four-wheeler. Now, your equipment, 720 Parker. Proudly introduces the 19. Okay.
I have music to our ears. A simple feature. You know, over the years, feathered creatures have been good to rock a car wash. If birds or car, van, or pickup, part of their live Rocket Car Wash, the Pottstown area's only full-service car wash facility where our friendly personal service review again. Rocket Car Wash, High Street, Pottstown. Phone 323-905. The starting Dead. Street Three. I We're back here at Potts Grove Stadium. The Trojans set to kick off to begin playing, as you saw in that last commercial break before coming back. Ron, they were dragging you uh, quite. I'm surprised they had enough guys with the ability to lift me off the ground. Oh, what, whatever happened to the doll? You know, I, she fired a gun and went off in my ear, and that was the last I saw her. As far as I know, she's still running down the woods with Larry Albira chasing behind. <laughs> but he'll never catch her. You know, she looked a little bit like the girl who was in that uh, Kawasaki commercial from a year ago. If that's the case, she probably got the Kawasaki and she's riding the Kawasaki through the woods. Mike Mills takes the Thorpe kickoff. Good room. Nice return up around the 40-yard line. Good return by Mike Mills to start things for the Falcons here in the third quarter. And they'll have excellent field position to start with. Had a real good kickoff return in the second quarter. You're going to see another good one. He's going to have real nice field position. Look at him take the ball, get himself squared up, get up the field. He gets a little bit of seam outside, and he starts to outrace some people and has position there uh, to start the, the uh, Falcons off here in the third quarter. 27-yard return, and the Falcons go first and 10 from their own 39. Eric Brown, the wide out to the left side. Handoff to Scarlotta. And the Trojans stack him up the line of scrimmage as the free safety, Dave Makowitz, came up to nail him. As you'll notice there, we, we again look at the first quarter statistics. We saw the Trojans with a big uh, uh, domination there in the first quarter with a 109 total yardage to 39 for the Grove. Appearing in the second quarter, we see the Falcons minus 32 yards rushing. So what we said about the Trojan defense certainly holds up. However, the Falcons were enabled to get 113 on the in the air, which now statistically they're coming back. And they add to that total is Mark Chrisman, who has credit for the loan. Falcon touchdown, hauls in that Lucci area for a pickup of around nine yards. Well, Chrisman certainly has been the prime target today of Chris Lucci. We're going to see Chrisman from his flanker position come out and run a sideline here there he is with the ball makes a nice move gets himself out of bounds the Falcons have some nice movement here early in the third quarter the linebackers are playing very loose and uh, enable Chrisman to slither out into the sideline and pick up some nice yardage that was a pickup of nine it'll be third down and one for Pottsgrove the ball just shy of midfield <laughs> Lucci sends Chrisman as the wide out to the right side. Eric Brown split wide left out of the eye backfield. Second man through is Mills. Mills right at the 50, and he's hauled down from behind on a nice tackle by Joe Brown. But he appears to have enough for the first down. Depends upon the spot of the ball. And he does have enough, and it'll be a Falcon first down right at the 50-yard line. Mike Mills almost broke that there. He broke one tackle, and then another tackle. He picked up an extra two yards on the play. Uh, if he breaks that second tackle, he's going to be in the secondary. Of course, a quick score here by the Falcons, and they are truly back in this contest. They trail by 14, 21 to 7. 10.30 left here in the third quarter. This chess Mont league matchup between these two backyard rivals. Tutoris, the man in motion, left side. Lucci looking for the split tight end. Drew Piacini, and Piacini hauls it in for a nine-yard pickup. So a little play action, make to the left side, and they hit the tight end coming across the middle. Well, everybody's been concentrating on Mark Crispin. This time they go to Piacini. 
just a quick look in here, and Makowitz is going to be the first guy to stop him. Just a quick look in, boom, there he is, and Makowitz makes the stop, but he did pick up about on the play. So the I'm sorry, eight. Falcons have been able to move it successfully through the air. Let's see if they stick to that regimen here in the third quarter. Scarlato to Mills, botched handoff, loose ball, and were the Falcons able to recover? That's the question right now. The Trojan defenders pointing, saying that they have the ball. Let's see as they unscramble the pile. And they're going to say the Pottstown Trojans have recovered. So with 9.36 to go here in the third quarter, the score 21 7. Trojans will be back in just a moment. Quality and craftsmanship. In your bathroom, we build them to last. In general, don't use any plastic or flake board. Real solid. We offer you a large selection of stock. We customize your car, entertainment centers, and more. Beauty and quality craftsmanship. That's a tradition. Home centers. Tradition that's built as the lifetime. Two sixteen South Pottstown. All in bed. New release videos and fine family. Soon will be and gremlins. And members regularly rent tape. Your beta by company 216 River Road, South Town. Back at Pottsgrove Stadium on a second and nine try for the Trojans from their own 43. Randy Douglas skirts the left side for four yards, bringing up a third and six for the Trojans. Trojans out of the eye. Todd Miller, the fullback, tailback is Randy Douglas. Karpinski out of the slot right, comes in motion near side. Randy Douglas for the first down as he ahead to around the 46 yard line of the Falcons and when the Trojans need the yardage they give it to big number 34. Down down by See, as far as the team scoring now, Pottsgrove does have a, a better average, 17.3 per game, as opposed to Pottstown's 9.3. However, uh, Pottstown has been very tenacious on defense, as we saw before. Uh, points against, uh, we're going to see that uh, the, the Pottstown team has given up very few points, as opposed to Pottsgrove's. First and 10 Trojans from the 46 yard line of the Falcons. Johnson, the man in motion near side. Greg Glenn for Steve Rose. The big tight end has it, and he's still going strong down to the 25-yard line. He is so exciting when he catches the football. Again, he breaks another tackle of a secondary defender. We're going to see when Glenn gets in trouble, he goes to Rose on a first down and 10. He hits Rose there. Rose catches the ball, breaks the tackle, almost breaks another tackle, and picks up a nice shot. A 20-yard pickup for the Trojans. Spot of the ball officially is the 26-yard line. It is first down and 10 for Pottstown. They lead it by 14, and they're looking for more. 7-14 left to go here in the third quarter. On the delayed draw to Randy Douglas, and Douglas runs head on. And to Mike Burbaum, number 74 for the Falcons, but not until he picked up around five yards on the play. As we take a look at the Trojan coaching staff, the man with the headset and the sweater on, Dan Weller, the head coach of the Trojans in his fourth season, leading the Pottstown 11. Second and five. Second down and five. You see the Trojans out of the split backfield. Looks up top, has the big tight end, Steve Rose, and Rose into the corner of the end zone. Touchdown, Trojans. They are just beating that area where the linebackers would be in that seam. He's just getting in the seam of the zone. It's just a trail across the middle of the field, and uh, he's going to line up in the left end position. He's going to trail himself and come across the left side of the field to the right to the flag. There he appears. He gets down the sideline. And uh, he's tough once he catches the football. 
There's Rose at the left end position. He delays a little bit. He crosses across the field. He gets into that seam, and boom, down the sideline. And the secondary play zone uh, defense is being driven off deep by the other receivers. All right, Doug Steven converts the point after, and it's 28 to 7, Trojans. We, we are back here at Potts Grove Stadium as I evade the bees and taking the kickoff for the Falcons was number 34 Maynard Brinkley a former Pottstown Trojan and Brinkley after a short run back is brought down by host the white shirted Trojans at around the 20 yard line coming up later in this quarter we'll have our Coca-Cola trivia quiz and don't forget we'll also have some special information on how you can participate in this third quarter uh, well I guess you can call it a tradition now we've been doing it for three years trying to stump you Ron and uh, hopefully we may have a, one that will stump you again in today's game I hope they pick one one that I sent in. You're not eligible. Yeah. <laughs> you can send a lot of cards and who knows, maybe we will come up with a question. All right, on the first down try, Falcons going nowhere as the Trojans defense just stacks them up around the line of scrimmage. Now that last offensive drive and touchdown by the Pottstown Trojans, they did an excellent job of mixing it up. They ran the football, they threw the ball sparingly, and they hit Rose a couple times. It was a real nice offensive drive by the Trojans. Now the Falcons are going to have to unleash some momentum here, uh, some offense to get themselves into this ball game here on their homecoming day. Yeah, there's our camera taking you right into the defensive end of things as you see the white shirted Trojans line up to go against the Falcons from the scrimmage Lucci looking on the left flank Eric Brown but the pass falls incomplete good shot of the Potts Grove cheerleaders down there trying to cheer their team on to victory here in a very exciting day for the Potts Grove students anytime you have a it's exciting. There's more than just the football team involved, the band, the parents, the uh, the people in the court, uh, the people that prepare it. It's just a big day here at Potts Grove Stadium. Another shot of the people. We did say that we challenged to see who would have more people at this game, and Potts Grove certainly wins this because they have the majority of spectators. Well, they're winning as far as the crowd is concerned. Right now, they're trailing the scoreboard by 21. Lucci downfield for Brown, and a great dive for the ball by Eric Brown but the pass just over his outstretched four so that'll bring up a fourth and ten try for the Falcons Corey Buchow number 64 you're going to see him on a stunt there he comes putting a lot of pressure on Lucci as Lucci sprints to his left side Chris Lucci can sprint left because he's a left-handed thrower, and he threw the ball there with a lot of accuracy just just off the fingertips Eric Brown and even though he got that ball away, he paid for it because Buckout really delivered a hard blow as he got the ball off. Jeff Fenox looked at downfield by the Trojan. Up by Thorpe, and Thorpe brought down at the 40 of Pottstown. It is 28 to 7, Trojans. thing you learn as a professional photographer is don't take chances. I'm talking about the paper we have our pictures printed on. Kodak paper. The overwhelming choice of professional photographers. So insist on Kodak paper wherever you see this sign. Quality Kodak color paper prints are available at any one of the four locations conveniently located in your area from our I'm a I'm going to and selling more cars. We're back here at Potts Grove Stadium. Five minutes even left here in the third quarter. It is 28 to 7. 
in favor of the Pottstown Trojans. And following that punt by Jeff Bannock, there was a holding call against the Trojans, and Pottsgrove will accept the penalty and they'll retain possession. So instead of the Trojans having it first and 10 at their own 40, Pottsgrove will have a first and 10 situation at their own 31. That's the worst possible penalty for the op opposition that you can get. A defensive holding automatically gives a first down, and Pottsgrove now is going to re uh, retain possession here, and that's a big play uh, for both teams. All right, Falcons with a chance, but they've got to strike now and do it often as they trail by 21. Lucci for Brown, the pass complete. Pick up of a couple of yards. As Karpinski came up in the coverage for the Trojans. All right, folks, here's our Coca-Cola trivia quiz question of the game. Who was the last Trojan to make the first team All-State Associated Press Poll? Now, it's the AP poll. Who was named to that AP poll? The last Trojan to make the All-State team on the Associated Press Poll. I'll let you think about that. And That's an exciting question. I know it couldn't be uh, Scott Glenn because Scott, I think, was a third team All-State. To be first team All-State is one honor, one heck of an honor. On second and short, the pass downfield intended for Brown overthrown. Up a third and five for Pottsgrove. Uh, we gave you some quite, there were some quite uh, obvious cues that we gave around halftime with regard to the answer on this. And uh, we'll let you think about it a little bit more and then we'll punch it more time and give you the, by the way, was submitted by a fan by the name of Dan Weller, <laughs> who also happens to be the coach of the Trojans. But uh, folks, hey, it's open to everybody except those associated directly with PCTV. It's a sadistic and, uh, type personality, Weller, huh? I didn't know that. Third down and five on the draw play going nowhere as the Trojan defense headed by Randy Douglas stacks up the ball carrier and for a loss of a couple of yards. Can I see this play again as my, uh, my mind's kind of looking at this question that they asked me, but we're going to see a lot of defensive pressure there by the Trojans. Uh, Cheetah, Pottstown Trojans had some great teams throughout their history. I'm trying to uh, think of a, uh, there was a great player, a doctor who was on the school board, I'm trying to think of his name, Dr. Detar, as a possibility, Tommy Schumann, who went on to Penn State University where he was an athlete, but I don't think Schumann was a stater. Then they had an individual go to Panhandle State that was a, a great player. All right, we'll uh, get a few more names from you in just a second. Ronnie, to punt by Fennock, rolls out of bounds at the Trojan 43-yard line. As you see the Lions score, and uh, we'll tell you this much. The answer is one that you already know. You've said this gentleman's name many, many times throughout the course of not only this season, but the last several that we've telecast PC. We're here right here on PC TV, and you'll be surprised, I think, when you see the answer. First and 10 Trojans from their own 43. Glenn for Steve Rose, and Rose is horse collared by Dave Sustek. Close coverage there. Trojan following, calling for an interference call. Was it a lineman or a back? Can you tell me that much? No, we can't. You guys are really big hearted. <laughs> It'll be second down 10 for the Trojans following the incompletion as they go from their own 43-yard line. I said, no, it wasn't Dan Weller. No, he's the one that sent the question. All right, we eliminated you, Dan. Karpinski, the man on the slot right side. Out of the eye, the pitch to the tailback is we're right. Right, skirts the left side, gets around the first line of pursuit, still going strong, and right will be run out of bounds around the 40-yard line of the Falcons. Nice pickup, and it'll be a first and 10 try for the Trojans. Couldn't be Ronnie Reinhardt. We're going to see this play now across the left side of the line. We're going to see the eye formation again. They're throwing the pitch back to the deep man of the eye. Ezra Wright, very exciting sophomore running back for the Trojans. Breaks a couple tackles, gets down the field to the right. To the left. And uh, he, as we said, he's exciting every time he picks up the football. 
Two, 2.57, the time remaining here in the third quarter, 28 to seven Trojans as they go first and 10 from inside the Falcon 40. Ezra Wright takes the pitch and runs it down close to the 30 yard line and a possible first down for Pottstown, but he'll be marked shy by about a yard. Uh, Howie so Jones is another consideration, and John Nash, who went on to Maryland. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with, uh, I'm gonna take a shot at Dr. David Tatar. All right, the Coca-Cola trivia question. Who was the last Trojan? And well, we'll do it after the play here as they're coming up to the line of scrimmage. Second down and a long one for the Trojans. Ball just over the 30 of the Falcons. Halfback option pass, Ezra Wright looking downfield for John Johnson, and it's almost picked off by the Falcon defender on the play there, number 11, Joe Tudorese. Did not fool the Pottsgrove secondary that time. Ezra Wright did not show enough run there. Okay, the Coca-Cola trivia quiz. Who was the last Trojan to make the first team All-State as voted by the Associated Press poll? And the answer is Dave Ridenauer, the year 1975, first play as a defensive back. Boy, that's that's fabulous. I didn't realize Dave was a first team uh, All-Stater. All that is a, just a great achievement. And uh, Steve Stavarou here is bragging in the press box that he knew the answer to something I never told me. On the end of the round, Nelson Barr, Barr on a third and one, has some running room, and then he's finally tripped up on a nice play by Eric Zettel, and had Zettel not gotten an Nelson Barr might have been able to cut it upfield for the end zone. You really get to know who your friends are, you know, a brain trust here at Pottsgrove, Mo Winterbottom standing right behind me as I'm trying to answer these questions. Ralph Mergie in. Uh, just nobody wants to try to help a guy when he's having a problem. We're gonna take a look here at this place, uh, at this reverse, here comes Nelson. Nelson's coming around the side. Watch Nelson get the hips upfield. Now he starts to motor down the sideline to the left side and boom, finally a uh, big gain, but we're gonna offset it here, I think on a clipping penalty. All right. Folks, we'd like you to uh, send in your Coca-Cola Trivia Quiz questions to Coca-Cola Trivia Quiz, care of PCTV, City Hall, King and Penn Streets, Pottstown, PA, 19464. Now, if you send in, uh, first of all, we'd like to have your question and answer. That's important. We did receive a couple uh, uh, letters and cards this week that had questions but no answers. And folks, no, you just can't, uh, you don't qualify on that basis. Uh, and uh, we don't have the time to do the research on them, but uh, send your name, address, telephone number, and your question and answer. And right after this play, we'll tell you about the nice prizes you'll win if we use your question during the third quarter. Third and 15 for the Trojans. Glenn on the draw to Ezra Wright, and Wright running hard. He'll pick up about four of those lost yards. But that'll bring up a fourth and long for the Trojans. Dave was a quarterback at Pottstown. He didn't make the first team All-State offensively. What did he make? Uh, first team as a defensive as a back? defensive back. Because I know he went on to Bloomsburg and played linebacker. Well, that's sneaky Dave Ridenauer. Right. Congratulations, David. Well, not only congratulations to Dave, but Dan Weller, because Dan, and just like you, can win a couple nice prizes from baseball-style cap, a T-shirt, and a six-pack of Coke Classic. And we'll be sending that. Now we could be sending it to you, too, as we watch the punt by John Johnson of the Trojans roll out of bound around the 11-yard line. We'll be forced to go first and 10 from deep. A minute and 12 left here in the third quarter as they trail by 21. Well, next week I'll know the answer because Ridenauer is on Weller's staff, and next week Ridenauer will send in a question where Dan Weller achieves some great accomplishment. So, Speaking of next week, the Trojans are entertaining the Downingtown Whippets over at Brick Memorial Field. And that, of course, will be a big game. It'll be homecoming night for the Trojans and the other half of the Twin Bill are here on Channel 11, Westchester East and the Winged Lions of St. Pius 10. You're the winner of the game ball. Please come to the press box. Lucci on first and 10 from his own 11. He got him. Field here for Eric Brown. And Brown hauls it in between. Check that. Mark Christman. Mark Christman, the receiver, hauls it in between two Trojan defenders, Dave Mackwitz and Jason Jones. So Lucci with that uncanny knack to hit the receiver. And and some heavy traffic. It's a tough throw for Chris Lucci because he's a left-handed chucker, and now he's going to sprint out to his right side. He throws it out there. He has a little bit of time. He didn't get time to set his feet totally. Uh, it appears there's good Trojans, but Mark Christman goes up and makes a nice offensive reception for his uh, Pottsgrove Falcon ball club. 23-yard pickup on that play. It is first and 10 for the Falcons from the 34 of Pottsgrove. Screen. Scarlato. Has some running room. Gets around 20 mark, still going. And he cuts 
back in from the sideline as John Karpinski and Jason Jones haul him down from behind after a big pickup down to the Trojan 28-yard line. Well, all day long, the Trojan defense is putting the pressure on Chris Lucci. This time they caught the Pottstown defense coming. Watch all the linemen come. Boom, look at them. They're all there. There's Tony Scarlotta, takes the middle screen. Now he gets some momentum and he can motor down the sideline, picks up some nice yardage. If it weren't for Karpinski's angle of pursuit, Scarlotta in the end zone and picked up six big points. So the Falcons threatening for the second time in this game. Time running out on them, however, here in the third quarter. Just 11 seconds and the clock running. Look the in. Slant oh. to that should be a flag. Eric Brown and number three, John Karpinski on the coverage. Falcon following, calling for a flag on the play. I would have called a flag on that play. I, that looked to me like it was d defensive interference. Karpinski hit him as he was trying to make the look in. Let's take a look at it. You be the judge at home. Let's watch number three from Pottstown, the defender here. Watch him hit. Chuck, there it is. Now, I don't see the doing the chuck in there. I think it's a tough call. The winner of today's game ball is All right, the incompletion brings up a second and ten for Pottsgrove from the Trojan 28. Lucci to the air. Looking downfield for Chrisman in the corner. And oh. just over his outstretched arms as Mark Chrisman was running for the flag. This game is beginning to heat up. You know, you can kind of sense the Pottsgrove Falcons now picking up a little momentum. The fans getting excited. We look down upon them uh, on homecoming day. One second remaining here in the third quarter. In completion as Chris Lucci looks to the sidelines for a bit of assistance. Joe Tudorice, number 11, replacing Chrisman in the Falcon lineup as he brings in the play from the sidelines. There's a shot of the very youthful coach, Dan Pauley, who's been around here for a long time, a lot of number of years. Ken coach, or coach Ken Harker Road. Final play of the third quarter. Lucci going for Eric Brown. He's, he's out open, there. Oh. And he slips as he tried to look over his shoulder. The ball coming back towards him. All right, we've come to the end of the third quarter of play. The score, the Trojans 28, Potts Grove 7. Get in here now. Oh, no. Wonder what he Problem, boss. I'll call tight stack. There's quality start from concept to completion. I think put together a package of needs. Letterhead, business cards, take care of everything. Freddie, great idea calling. Glad I thought. Your winter. Make yours skidoo. For the power. For the ride. For the freedom. For the adventure. Skidoo 1986. The adventure continues. Skidoo. Built for the long run. Make your winner with Skidoo at Leisure Equipment, Route 724, Parker Ford. Back here with the start of the fourth quarter at Falcon Stadium. It's 28 to 7 in favor of the Trojans. The pitch goes to one of the Trojan backs, Randy Douglas, and he's going nowhere. Let's take a look at those at the last two plays of the third quarter. The, the last two plays of that Falcon drive. Where uh, Pottsgrove Falcon uh, offensive person is out there and slips. He beats the coverage. And then another play. Watch Karpinski, the defensive back, just get his hand in at the last moment here to deflect that pass because two. Eric Brown was out there and twice was thwarted, once by slipping and the other time by a great defensive effort by John Karpinski. On second and long. Intended receiver, Dan Providing the coverage like adhesive, and the pass falls harmlessly to the turf. So that'll bring up a third down and 12 for the Trojans. That was the nicest defensive play I've seen yet, uh, covering Steve Rose. Sustek went over his back, and they attacked the football.
flag on that play. That was just a very fine defensive effort by the uh, young junior David Sustak. Good play, Dave. 11-14, time remaining here in the fourth quarter. It's third down and 12 for the Trojans. Glenn, as the Trojans attack conservatively now here at the outset of this final stanza, and a pickup of a couple of yards, Dan Waller, the man in the middle of your screen with the baseball cap on and a headset, and Roosevelt Aiken on his right or your left as you look at it on the screen. So it'll be fourth and ten, and the Trojans will be forced to kick it away. John Johnson will drop back and punch for base. It'll be the deep safety for the Falcons standing back inside his own 40. Falcons Johnson manages to get it away. Chrisman will watch it roll, and the Trojans will down it at the 41 yard line. It is 28 to 7, Pottstown, and we'll be back in just a moment. Sensational dancing star of the movie Flash Dance. Pottstown Health Club brings you the world's first total dance fitness system. Free dance with Maureen Jahan. Suddenly feel the beat. Come alive. Music, movement, expression, your own style. This is free dance. It's hot. It's the exercise and dance routine. Any routine. And it's at Pottstown Health Club now. Back here at Falcon Stadium, 10.05 left to go here in the fourth quarter. And the Falcons on a first and 10 try have Scarlotta stacked up for a loss of a couple of yards back to the 36. Call it second down at 14 for the Falcons, who trail by 21 and need to get going and get going rather quickly here on offense if they have any aspirations of getting back into this contest. This makes sense. Time's a factor, but there's still enough time to do it for the Pottsgrove Falcon people. And they've thrown the ball well in this contest. Look for them to do so here in this final stanza. The completion to Eric Brown, and he's upended by John Karpinski. Nice tackle after a gain of about four yards. Call it five yards. The spot of the ball is the 42. It'll be third and nine for Pottsgrove. He did well to hold on to the hang on to that ball. He was uh, given a sharp hit when he caught the completion, but certainly in the previous quarter was thwarted on two near uh, touchdown receptions. Falcons send a Chrisman wide to the right side. Look for perhaps Lucci to pick him out. And they're looking for Mark Christman, and Jason Jones rides him down, but not until he picks up the first down inside Trojan territory. When you watch this play, you watch number 40, Tony Scarlotta, that you wouldn't really notice, but he does a good job in blocking the defensive end that comes for the Trojans to enable, watch the block there by Scarlotta, and then it enables uh, Lucci enough time to get the ball out to Mark. A lot of times we watch just the receiver and the person running the football, but that time I have a very good block by the offensive line and the fullback there, Scarlotta. 8.43, the time remaining here in the fourth quarter. 28 to seven, Trojans. First and 10 for Pottsgrove at the Pottstown 46. Chrisman on the reverse, coming to the right side. We'll get perhaps a yard at best as he's dropped at the 45 by Steve Rose. No matter how many times Pottsgrove tries to run the ball, they're having problems now. It's going to be up to this young man, Chris Lucci, to try to move his ball club into the end zone via the air. I do not see the Pottsgrove Falcons is going to be able to sustain enough running drives to get themselves in with inside of 10 minutes to remain in the ball game. So it's going to be up to number 18 to get the ball to Eric Brown, Mark Chrisman, uh, Piacini, and his other receivers. Of course, it's going to be up to the offensive line to give them that time to do so as well. Well, On good point. second and eight, Lucci out of the pocket, rolling to the left, looking downfield, and Dave Makowitz will pick that one off intended for Eric Brown. And that time, despite the double, he's not able to put it between the two Trojan defenders. Well, he just uh, he underthrows this ball. He tries to jam it into the coverage there. He is covered. We're going to take was Chris Lucci. Now he does have time. He sets him. He doesn't really get off his back foot and break, fall through. And uh, there is good coverage by the and they come up with the football. So the Makowicz interception sets up a first and 10 for the Trojans at their own 24-yard line with seven and a half minutes left to go here in the fourth quarter. As you see our Lions score. 
Trojans will keep it on the ground right now, trying to eat up some of this time as Todd Miller, number 44, takes the Glen handoff and gets a yard where he's stacked up around the line of scrimmage by John Mack. Again, all it takes is a postcard. Folks, send in your postcard or letter, whatever, to Coca-Cola Trivia Quiz, care of PCTV, City Hall, King and Penn Streets, Pottstown, PA, 19464. Include your name, address, telephone number, and, of course, your question and answer. That's important. We need your answer in addition to your question. Second down nine for the Trojans. Randy Douglas... That postcard can in line of scrimmage at best. That postcard can enable you to get on my good list or my blacklist. Dan Weller today has joined the blacklist because he did win the uh, six pack uh, on the behalf of my stupidity. So Dan Weller now has moved into the blacklist at the number one spot. Maybe uh, Dan will share that six pack with you when we get over to Greg Memorial Field Friday night. That could help eradicate the problem of his being on the top of my blacklist. Trojans out of the eye on third and nine. Glenn going nowhere. Ball falls to the ground and the Falcons have recovered. Greg Glenn coughs it up. And number 42, John Mack falls on it for the Falcons. Big play by the Pottsgrove defense. Really stuck it in here this time. What's the big play? He's going to make the hit. He smothers Glenn. The ball pops out and the fumble recovers now they're knocking at the door here it's still enough time to get into this ball game five minutes it's gonna be tough but they would have time if they could score quickly Falcons have it first and ten at the Pottstown 19 yard line This timeout called by the Statistics Trojans. In the, in the third quarter, you'll see the minus 35 still coming back to haunt the Falcons. However, they did put 160 yards into the air, which helps their total, 125. But the Trojans are almost a 2-1 to one advantage. All right, you see Chris Lucci, 546 left here in the fourth quarter, 28-7, to seven, the Trojans. Time for a day just chasing the sun or doing the work that's got to be done or riding a race that's got to be won. Kawasaki. Now with a choice of three-wheelers that offer low prices, high performance, and about everything in between. And for one more wheel of a check out the all-new Bayou four-wheeler. Get the best of both worlds at your Kawasaki dealer. new 1986 Cowan 300cc four-wheel at Leisure Equipment, Route 725, Parker Ford. I'm for cars. Returning to action, the Lucci pass intended for Eric Brown was touched by both Brown and the Trojan defender. It bounded up in the air, and Drew Piacini came down with it. Great concentration by Drew Piacini now. Crispin be or, uh, Lucci beginning to mix it up. Watch Piacini come back trailing. Wasn't intended for him, but heads up play and picked up some yardage. But we have an injury down on the field. But the Falcons were able to pick up the first down, so that sets up a first and goal from the Trojan six. And with 535 left to go here, a score, and perhaps a, some sterling defensive play. Who knows? It's st still a shot. Next week, a big game, and this is a big game. The Pottstown Trojans, a team that we know can play a, a whale of a defensive game when it wants to and when it can, or when it has to, for that matter, takes on the Downingtown Whippets, a team that possesses probably the best back in the league this year, Ralph Miller, who ran for 260 yards as they you know, just ran roughshod over Owen J. Roberts in their big win. And then, of course, the other game, Westchester East, as you take a look at Eric Brown, number 25, the outside receiver for the Falcons coming off the field. East against... St. Pius 10. You know, going back to that Friday night tilt first, uh, Pottstown has the ability, we feel, to beat Downingtown. Uh, Downingtown hasn't lost any games. Ken, Coach Ken Harker wrote a little upset. I don't know exactly. They're going to make the player come out for one. You must come out for one play if you're injured. I'm not sure because Piacini came out off the bench. 
Now, I don't know why they sent Piacini off the field here for a play. Maybe we can get some type of interpretation. No, that was Jeff Lupold, number 85. They were trying to put in to, to the play here. Drew Piacini lined up as a tight end on the right side of Lucci. All right, it's first and goal for the Falcons. Lucci, under some pressure, fires in the corner of the end zone. Piacini, touchdown, Falcons. Corey Bocar looking at the touchdown reception. He can't believe it. They were both there. Lucci threw this ball a little bit off of balance. They're going to get an unnecessary, they're going to get a 15-yard uh, a penalty there for on sportsmanlike conduct. But let's watch Lucci on this play. He's going to sprint out to his left. He's not going to have great control. He throws the ball a little bit off balance. So he throws it over to defender. There's Corey Bocar just looking. He can't believe it. Now one of the exchanges the nicety and they're going to get flagged for 15 big ones all right we're going to take another look at it and we were camera people high up top here almost uh, shielded again on that touchdown toss by lucci there's the man who just threw the pass for the falcons here's the point after try by jeff fanock number 43 out of the hold of pete real the kick is true, and with 5.18 left to go, it is 28-14, the Trojans still in command. Looking at this one more time, was Chris Luzzi sprint out to his left, a little bit off balance, gets the ball off, two receivers for Pottsgrove there, a couple defenders out on his rear end, looking at it, he can't believe the guys come up with that catch, but now Pottsgrove is only trailing by 14 points, still five minutes and 18 seconds left, 28-14, I think we're going to see an onside kick, Danny Petro coming up. No question about that as these uh, Falcons are fired up. I know the home crowd here at Postgrove Stadium is. Uh, again, Postgrove, as we've mentioned time and time again, always going to hang in there to the end. I don't care whether they're playing the best in the league or the worst. They're going to go out and give it 110%. It's that fun football program that Ken Hartler wrote. Both coaches we saw were instructing their legions, you know, coach people to get downfield and recover the kick. On the other hand, the Potsdam Trojans are telling their players to make sure they get on the football. If things are getting exciting. There's an interpretation on the call. Coach Weller's questioning it, wants to know. He's not sure that the official but uh, he wants to get some type of explanation. We saw the Pottstown coaching staff do a good job one week ago in getting a call reversed because of uh, they wanted an explanation. A question, and that's you know part of uh, the coaching regimen each game is to beat it mentally too. You got to concentrate just like the players do. You have to have them earn that 15 cents an hour. There's a squib kick out of the hands of a couple of Trojans. A wild scramble for the ball. Let's see who came up with it. We Let's still don't know who has the football. It could be. That's the Pottstown. Pottstown Trojans have the ball. All right. Jason Jones was the man off the bottom of that wild scramble with the ball. This is a great onside kick because it goes over the first plane. It takes a bounce here. There it goes by the first people. They always have the best people with the best hands up in that front line. All by them, and it could have really been anybody's ball, and the Trojans would have recovered, or, or recovered it, but uh, it could have been a big, big play for the Potts Grove Falcons. Big tr good try, too, because of that 15-yard penalty. They kicked off from the Trojan 45. And had they been able to recover, it would have been, you know, Great opportunity for the Falcons. Randy Douglas busts one right up the middle, however, and a first and 10 try from his own 20. Randy Douglas takes the ball up the middle and is hit by number 32, Mark Douglas, Douglas runs the ball for the first down. All right, first and 10 for Pontstown as we return to action. There's John Strickler, one of our camera people, doing his job right now. He works for the Pontstown Mercury. As a photographer. I mean, John's getting paid for the day out there, right? Aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> On first and 10, the Trojans give it to Todd Miller, number 44, and he'll pick up four yards to about the 38 yard line. Coming up this week, Chessmont Highlights. Ron and join Ron and I as we discuss the past happenings of Chessmont League football over the weekend. And we'll also be chatting with several youngsters from Pottsgrove High School. Join us Wednesday, 8.30, Thursday at 9 p.m. right here on Channel 11. 
Todd Miller across the 40 to about the 41 yard line. He's going to be shy of the first down by a couple of yards and the Trojans will be faced with a third and call it a long one. Time becoming a factor now. There's less than four minutes remaining in the ball game. The Pottsgrove Falcons have to get the ball back. If the uh, Trojans can sustain a ground attack here, they're going to erode the clock because the Trojans have a 14 point advantage here. Third and a long one for Pottstown. The ball just over their 40 yard line. Out of the split backfield. Hand off to Randy Douglas, and Douglas has the first down and some more for the Trojans as he's brought down around the 45 by the Falcons, number 79, David Potts. You know, sometimes I wish these trivia questions, they would start asking you for the answers because I checked back at your high school and they told me that you weren't bad in school, Denny, but you were the smartest kid in the dumbest row, row seven, seat one. So. It'll be first down and 10 for the Trojans. That is Todd Miller breaking one to the outside. He's got some running room. One man to beat. And he's finally hauled down around the 32 of the Falcons by Eric Zettel. And Zettel had to come a long way to make that stop. Such a diversity of backfield people for the Pottstown Trojans. We've seen Miller today. We've seen Ezra Wright. We've seen Jason Jones. We've seen Randy Douglas. This time it's Todd Miller's chance. Todd Miller's going to take the handoff over his right side. Breaks a tackle there. Breaks two more here. Gets a field. Breaks another one there. That's four. All Almost broke five tackles. Very big gain there for Todd Miller, the junior running back. Glenn again to Todd Miller. And Miller picks up a quick four over the left side. Spot of the ball will be the 26 of the Falcons. And the Trojans again trying to punch one hole from about 26 yards away with 225 left to go. You know, getting back to that last uh, retort there by Yaron, what's the old saying? I want the class. <laughs> Why well, used to go to school just to eat my lunch? I heard you were big and major in cafeteria 202 mm -hmm. and 03 and 04. The pitch to Randy Douglas, and Douglas is going to be stymied on his try for the first down as Dave Sostag, number 33, comes up from his quarterback position to make the hit. And the Trojans will be shy by third and four. Boy, I tell you, Greg Glenn has really improved since the Coachville uh, beginning there with all those fumbles. We haven't seen him turn the ball over at all today. Uh, the last two weeks he's had uh, very few mistakes and he's done a very good job. He's getting better. That time they tried with the option. Pottsgrove defense defended it well, attacked the quarterback, and Sustick did a good job on the pitch. Randy Douglas. He's going. And Douglas in for the scores. Douglas. Just broke it at the line of scrimmage, and the Falcons a bit dejected right now as they knew they were in this game. But now time against them, and the scoreboard as well as Randy Douglas pops one from 22 yards. Douglas the in the touchdown. up back formation over the right side. It's almost like a 30 wedge type of thing. He breaks the tackle. They're trying to tackle the football, as so many times happens. It's game. Somebody breaks it big for the opposition when the other team's trying to get the football back. Number 76 for the Trojans, Doug Stevens, lines up for his fifth point after try of this ball game. Possibly the hold of Greg Glenn. Stevens, possibly the biggest place kicker in the leg. He's six foot three, 220 pounds. He could kick it over with his big toe. Well, he's done an excellent job this ball game. Perfect five for five, and his point after tacked on to the scoreboard makes it read 35 14 in favor of the Trojans. And with just a minute and 27 seconds left to go. So the Falcons gave it a valiant try here in this second half. And, uh, you know, tables turn. There for a moment, they pulled it within 14 points and almost recovered the onside kick. Perhaps this could have been a different ball game three minutes ago. It's ridiculous how, t how the uh, momentum changes in these games. Just a minute. Grove Falcons were trailing 28 to 14. Almost had a real big play by recovering an onside kick. Could have possibly gotten themselves right back into the ball game. But now it appears to look like a lopsided score, even though the tempo of the game did not appear lopsided as a spectator. John Thorpe will put it for the Trojans. Maynard Brinkley and Mike Mitt Falcons. Brinkley will pick it up at his own 19. Running laterally, finds a little bit of room on the sideline. Around the 26 yard line after a seven yard return. So, right now, the Falcons will be trying to salvage a little bit of pride as they'll go to work first and 10 from the 27 yard line of Potts Grove. 
21 points. You know, these Trojan fans should really get out of here and see them play Friday night against the Downingtown Whippets because they're one of the few teams left in the Chessmont League that can beat the Downingtown Whippets. They have the tools to do it. They're going to need a superhuman effort, but I think that could be a very, very exciting game, and uh, we invite the people to come out and watch that ball game. Yeah. For the Pottsgrove Rooters, you know, they, uh, their team had shown some real good signs today. They're going to probably come off at the short end of the stick, but uh, they have shown some good signs, and there's a long season left, and they're going to have, a, a, you know, I think a decent season. And, of course, Downingtown, the only undefeated club in Chessmont League play, and the Trojans with the type of defense that they have going up against a very explosive offense, uh, you know, spearheaded by Ralph Miller, the for Downingtown. One heck of a contest. Of course, it'll be homecoming, too, and I'll give a lot of the old grads an opportunity to come out and, you know, take a look at this 85 uh, edition of the podcast. Has done a good job right now. Uh, with up by 21 in a minute and 20 left. I think it's safe to say that they have registered. So they'll be three one and one on the season, two one and one in the Chessmont League. Uh, the gentleman yawning there was Mr. Alvin Coleman, the superintendent of the Pottsville School District. As Maynard Brinkley running hard on the left side is drugged down by Jason Jones after a pickup of about seven yard lines. About two, three minutes ago, Dr. Coleman was very excited about the play, but now at the end of the ball game, you know, certainly his team trailing by 21 points, his enthusiasm is waning just a little bit, but, uh, you know, it's good to see the people that are the superintendent of schools, people like Dr. Rydell, the principals of the high school, these people really come out and support their high schools that they, uh, you know, they work for and work at. Of course, it was a long week, too, uh, home, homecoming week, a lot of, you know, preparation, a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of spirit in the school from Monday through Friday, can't buy the big Game, of course, the dance and everything else. Now in the quarterback, number 14, that is Pete Reel. And Reel, on his first pass play, finds Jeff Loophole, number 85, open down the left sideline. And again, the pass, Pasco quarterbacks have that uncanny knack, you know, for finding receiver open in heavy traffic. Well, he's done a nice job. There's uh, Dalton Fine's daughter. I was kidding her at the halftime. I can't believe that she's so attractive, and I know Dalton so well. And I'm only kidding you, Dalton, but you have a very pretty daughter. Carl Sissio's da daughter, Dr. Sissio, who's an instructor at uh, Montgomery County College. There's the replay of that last play, and, and we have a catch there by Leupold after Lucci threw the ball for some nice yardage. All right, 30 seconds left in the game. Trojans lead 35-14. And they'll go to 3-1-1 one one on the year, 2-1-1 one one in the Chessmont League standings. And right now, if the Trojans can come up with a big win against Downingtown this coming Friday night at home against on homecoming night at Craig Memorial Field, that'll really jumble the standings in the Chessmont League. It could be anybody's race. Pete Reel. Avoids the pursuit and real drug down from behind for a loss. It could have been a lot worse as Jason Jones came up from the safety spot to make the hit. 14 seconds on the scoreboard clock running down. We're at 10. And that possibly is the last play of this ball game. Real and his teammates watch the scoreboard clock. Register, triple zero. We've come to the end of this contest here at Pottsgrove Stadium. The final score, the Trojans 35, the Falcons 14. We'll be back for our analysis in just a moment. Home is probably the biggest investment of your life. That's why you need and Company. Walker and Company has been delivering the best value for buyers and sellers since 1968. Huff's Church. Bill from Phoenixville to Ole Valley. If you're selling, call the Glocker. Glocker and Company is a member of the multiple listing services. Your property will appear in real estate throughout the area and across the country. Locally owned and operated, personally interested in you, created and call catalog. Call 3 6 0181 Now you can drive with the greatest of ease because the Honda Accord Ford and is a smooth operator. It's slow, air could line, makes cruising a breeze. There's also front wheel drive, four wheel independent suspension, an impressive 12 valve engine. It's useful in the interior too. So come see the four door sedan at Pottstown Honda, Route 422, Pottstown. The car that 
games. Hey, and the great out here. I shopped for something that had affordable. Huh? <laughs> Do you think the girl? Hey, that must be the pizza we ordered. All right. Oh. Coleman campers, the campers can't stay away from no matter you are. Find anything. Hey, get in here now. I wonder what he. From concept to are they put together package our business their head they take care of everything. Pretty great idea. Glad out of it. The Big Red is one of the most fully equipped machines you can buy. It's got electric starting, an automatic stroke engine that can pull up to 850 pounds. It's even got hydraulic suspension front and rear, and handy reverse gear. In fact, the only thing Honda's Big Red doesn't come with is the driver. Available at Kiss Honda. This cable ladder receive a discount or free gift with purchase. Hi, is this the Turkey Bacon Club? No, this is the Royal Moose Club! Yeah. Number two, two of body. Everyone comes to Racks for the Turkey Bacon Club. Excuse me, ma'am, is this the Turkey Bacon Club? No! No! It's the Happy Pleasures Club! The Racks Turkey Bacon Club. Nutritious all-white turkey, crisp bacon, lettuce, tomatoes, and real mayonnaise on a corn-dusted roll. Or the Gilbertsville shop. Back here at Ponce Grove Stadium, Dunning Peter along with Ron Reed. 35 14 of the finals. The Trojans upend the Falcons. Uh, not a pretty afternoon as far as the ground game of the Falcons was concerned, but uh, some bright lights, uh, hopes for the offense as far as the passing game is concerned. They did extremely well against the uh, tenacious Trojan defense. Well, no, not too many teams are going to have too many bright days against the Potsdam Trojan defense. I think that the defense has improved tremendously for the Trojans, and they're going to give anybody a tough time to trying to run, you know, run the ball against themselves. The uh, Potts Grove Falcons responded a lot in the second half, I thought, because they started to give Chris Lucci some more time, and he started to mix it up. He not only threw to Mark Chrisman, his primary target in the first quarter by far, but he threw it to Drew Piacini, he threw the ball to uh, to Brown, and he started to mix the ball up a little bit. And the Potts Grove Falcons have a nice uh, uh, passing attack, but they really have to work on the offensive running attack, uh, which has been a problem for them. And for the Trojans, uh, conversely, it was the first uh, good four-quarter game they've had this season, especially from an offensive standpoint of putting uh, points on the scoreboard. Well, they came in here to play the football game. You know, they didn't even warm up here on this field. Coach Dan Weller was one of his ploys. He, he practiced over at his own field, came over here about five minutes before one. You know, they were kind of juiced up, very quiet coming off the bus. They really knew they had a big ball game, and they did put it together for four quarters. The last couple games that we watched the Trojans, we saw Randy Douglas play a great game. Then we saw a Jason Jones play a great game and a couple spotty great plays but today there was a lot of big plays by the Pottstown Trojans and they really have a lot of momentum going into a very big week for them playing Downingtown on Friday night they're gonna have to recover this ball game get out there and that could be a very exciting game the F Falcons on the other hand once they get the running game intact they're gonna be a good football team all right well join us for the first half of that twin bill next weekend Downingtown and Pottstown Friday night October the 11th and then the Saturday October 12th game that we'll have for you on Channel 11 will feature Westchester East a team that ended the only J. Robert Streak taking on the wing lines for St. Pius 10. For our entire sports team here at Channel 11, for my sidekick Ronnie Reed, I'm Denny Petro saying so long from Pontsgrove Stadium where the final score stands. The Trojans 35, the Falcons 14.